Hello, everyone, and welcome to our call today. We are so glad that you could join us for LifeWave Connect. As you know, LifeWave Connect is a space where we get to connect with you every other week and discuss product and discuss business and really come together as a LifeWave family globally. We have our call every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. Pacific. Each of our calls we do present in English and we have language support options available for you. For those of you that are looking for language uh, options for simultaneous interpretation, there is a button at the bottom of your screen that says interpretation with a globe above it. Go ahead and select that and you will be able to access the language that you're looking for. We do support European languages uh, within our morning session. And in the evening, we support Spanish, Chinese, and Japanese interpretation. So for those of you that are looking for those, those language options, that's where you can find those. Now, today, we actually have something that is really, truly exciting that we get to share with you today. Many of you know that we have someone very, very special that is our founder, our CEO, and the individual who invented LifeWave technology. And we are so fortunate that David Schmidt, who is that, that founder, that, that, that innovator, that inventor of LifeWave technology, has the opportunity to be with us today. And, and all of you get to hear from him specifically as he shares some details surrounding X39, as well as specifically glutathione. Now, let me tell you a little bit about David. I know that many of you are very well uh, versed with who he is and what he's accomplished and what he's done with LifeWave, but some of you might be new. So for those of you that don't know, David, David Schmidt, he is the inventor of LifeWave technology. Like I said, he is the founder of LifeWave and he is the CEO of our company. He has over 30 years of experience in business and product development. He was formally educated in management information systems and biology at Pace University in Pleasantville, New York. David has been an entrepreneur from the beginning and has, has has owned several companies, and one of which has developed technology even for the US military. Because of his innovations, in fact, David was awarded an honorary doctorate through the International Hall of Fame of Inventors. So David is the holder of nearly 100 patents with many others that are in pending, pending status or currently being written. Through his tireless efforts and innovations, David realized that phototherapy and the technology of LifeWave an individual really could leverage their own stem cells and activate a more youthful state in a safe and effective way. X39 was born. And so much great excitement and momentum has come out of that and all of the things that David has invented through LifeWave. We are really, really truly blessed to have a founder who is so unique as David and not only unique in what he can accomplish and his skills, but unique in his, his love for you and his love for helping others to achieve what it is they're looking for from a health standpoint through this technology. And not only that, David loves to train. He loves to come and share his knowledge with each of you. And I know many of you, um, like I said, maybe maybe brand new to LifeWave, and this might be your first inter interaction with David, but honestly, you're in for a treat. So David, are, are you on the call with us? Absolutely, Emily, happily, happy holidays. And that was quite an introduction. I hope I can live up to that. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather just be introduced as a humble inventor and uh, and leave it at that. But uh, anyway, it's it's good to be here with you today. And I'm glad that we're going to have a chance uh, together to introduce people, not only to uh, glutathione, but I think what is going to be surprising to people is that they usually think of the glutathione patch as our detoxification patch, and that's absolutely true. But there is, I think, uh, to many people, a surprising connection between glutathione and stem cells. So if you've been using the glutathione patch for detoxification, well, then we have some great news for you. You have also been protecting your stem cells and even improving the activity of your stem cells. So we're going to be digging into that today and uh, it's going to be revealing and uh, I think it'll be educational and of course enjoyable. 
Well, I'm certainly excited, David, and and many of you are probably saying the same thing I was thinking in my mind. You're much too humble. Uh, you know, I certainly appreciate who you are and the way that you approach things, but we are impressed by you. We, we are so lucky to have you, and I, for one, cannot wait to hear what you have to share with us about about glutathione, how it does detox, but to your point, how it works with our stem cells. I think this is going to be really exciting and illuminating for our members. So thank you so much. Well, how about we get started? I think that's great, that's great. So tell us a little bit about what is glutathione? Yeah, let's start with uh, first the very basic. So glutathione is what's called a tripeptide. And this means it's made up of three amino acids. And there is what's called a rate limiting amino acid that is in glutathione and that's the amino acid cysteine. And this is important because in order for the body to form glutathione, you have to have cysteine and cysteine is gonna be found in things like eggs and dairy products. So if someone is a vegan or a vegetarian, Uh, they might want to consider taking uh, what's called a NAC supplement, N-acetylcysteine, just to make sure they're getting enough uh, cysteine in their diet daily so they can make glutathione. Now, uh, if you just take the cysteine supplement, your glutathione levels will go up by about 14% over a period of 30 days. Now, in comparison uh, with the patch, we can get it up on average of 300% in only 24 hours. Uh, So making sure that you have enough of this amino acid in the diet is pretty important. But glutathione functions as the body's master antioxidant. And so it's ubiquitous. It's found nearly everywhere. Uh, Glutathione, not surprisingly, is going to be found predominantly in the liver, And uh, this makes sense because the liver is what's going to facilitate detoxification. So the takeaway from this is that glutathione is a extremely powerful antioxidant. It's found nearly everywhere in the body. And one of its primary things that it does is is to facilitate detoxification. That's how we know about it. Wow. You know, it's interesting. I love hearing you talk about what it actually does. And I, I hope you don't mind if I take a small step back and just say, well, what is an antioxidant? And why is it important that we even have that in our body? Yeah. So there's, this is, uh, you know, the yin and yang of life between oxidation and antioxidants. And it's very important that we have both. As we get older, uh, our antioxidant systems can begin to fail there can be an accumulation of oxidative stress and also inflammation. And this leads to degradation of the DNA and the rest of our body. And then eventually people die. Uh, But the good news here is uh, our ultimate goal is age reversal. We want to keep people at minimum as young for as long as possible. So keeping the antioxidant systems elevated and managing oxidative and inflammatory stress is very important. So in short, antioxidants are going to protect uh, the uh, cells and even the DNA in our body. So it's very important uh, that we keep elevated levels of antioxidants and we keep that in balance with the oxidative systems. Awesome. Well, you, you did talk a little bit about where you see glutathione most present in the body. Um, and you, I think you were alluding to the fact that that's kind of how our body gets rid of some toxins and things of that nature. How do toxins get in the body generally? By breathing. Breathing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get, uh, unfortunately, there's toxins everywhere today. Um, I once saw Brenda Watson, uh, who is a, uh, I believe she's a nutritionist and naturopath. And she gave a lecture and was referring to a clinical study done on over 400 people. And in that study where blood and urine samples were taken, over, I know, it was 100% of the population had foreign chemicals and the average number of toxins was 97. So the bottom line is the, the very act of eating food of uh, drinking water, drinking anything almost, and um, breathing the air, we're going to get toxins into our body. It's inevitable. So we kind of have to accept that, uh, number one, we should try to get as many toxins out of our environment as possible, but we're never going to be completely successful. Um, 
So we have to beef up and detoxify daily. And one of those detoxification strategies is going to be to keep our body's levels of glutathione elevated. And there's certainly other strategies. I love that. You know, I sometimes hear from people, oh, I drink lots of water. I eat healthy. I should be good. That's that's really not enough, is it? No, not by a long shot. So the first thing is drinking lots of water and eating healthy, eating organic. That is a huge positive step. So if someone is doing that, they are way ahead of the game. Uh, but you have to go a little bit further. And keeping the glutathione levels elevated is important. Um not only for detoxification, but there are quite a few health disorders that are associated with glutathione deficiencies. So for example, Parkinson's is a great example uh, because it's directly associated with depleted levels of glutathione. Uh, and this is concerning because glutathione is neuroprotective. It's gonna protect our brains and it's gonna protect the nerves. So in other words, the lesson here is if you don't keep your glutathione levels elevated, you'll accumulate toxins and make your body more susceptible to illness. But in very extreme cases for people that are genetically predisposed to Parkinson's disease, they could be opening themselves up uh, to getting Parkinson's. And by the way, this is probably a great opportunity to say, uh, I am not a medical doctor. We're not making medical claims. And these are things uh, that if anyone wanted to use any of our products, uh, they're using them for general wellness and anything beyond that, they should speak with their healthcare practitioner. No, oh, I appreciate you saying that. I, I know it's important for us to all understand, you know, that these are really meant to support our health, right? Not diagnose. I appreciate Exactly. That. Yep. Yeah. Well, that, that is so interesting. And I, and I love hearing you say that because I, I do think it is an important step to really focus on our health and the things we can do, whether it's the what we're eating and, and how what we're drinking and, and how we're exercising. But I appreciate that perspective. But how does how does detox actually work? And how do how frequently should we be detoxing? How do toxins leave our body? How does that work? Yeah, we actually did a clinical study on this a number of years ago with Dr. Homer Nazaran and Dr. Sherry Greenberg. And what we wanted to look at was what would happen if someone was using the glutathione patch five days a week versus seven days a week. So glutathione is what's known as a chelating agent. Uh, chelation is a Latin word and it means claw. And the glutathione attaches to the toxin and then removes it through the uh, lymphatic system. Um, it's very important to have a diet that's rich in fiber because fiber will also carry these toxins away. But it, it's kind of like a claw going in chemically and attaching to these toxins and pulling them out. Uh, glutathione has been used for decades in hospitals as a way to remove mercury and other heavy metals, but it's probably the most well-known for its ability to remove excess mercury from the body. Um, so we did this clinical study and to everyone's surprise, we found out that the results of using the glutathione patch seven days per week was about twice as effective as using glutathione only five days per week. And what this really uh, said to us is that we're being exposed to toxins daily. So we really need a daily strategy for dealing with these toxins. Uh, it's not something that you can do once a month. This is something that we all have to be very proactive about on a daily basis for optimum health. Wow, so, so do you, I mean, I'm, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but with our specific patch, do you think that that's something we should be using every day to assist with what you just discussed? Now, not necessarily okay. because our other patches will help to preserve the body's levels of glutathione. So this is something that's highly individualized. So if someone was leading a lifestyle where they were drinking daily, maybe smoking, you know, which I wouldn't recommend, uh, if, if they were intentionally um, introducing things into their body that should not be there uh, or certainly not be there in excess, then they might want to use uh, the glutathione patch daily. Uh, but if not, using the glutathione patch once or twice a week is okay because our patches such as X39 and Eon, we have demonstrated that they will give a mild increase in glutathione. So the difference would be about 30 to 40% increase 
with X39 uh, or Eon uh, versus 300% for the glutathione patch. So um, yeah, that, that's a significant enough difference to say, use glutathione when you really wanna detox or if you have a lifestyle that's more conducive to that. Otherwise, you don't have to use it as often. Oh, I appreciate that. I know there's been a lot of questions about that on the chat, and I know many just wonder like what makes sense. So I appreciate you kind of breaking it down for us that way. Sure. Now you you alluded to something a little bit earlier um, about how glutathione and stem cells work and and longevity. So can you talk to us a little bit about how does glutathione come into play with longevity relating to detox and stem cells? Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. So. Um, we have a overarching goal in our research to uh, work, develop products and develop new technology for ultimately age reversal. And we know that this is achievable. We know that uh, extraordinarily long lifespans are achievable because we see it in nature now. We see things like lobsters, certain clams, planaria, um, glass sponges that effectively never age. So we're trying to understand those mechanisms and then apply them in new technology. One of the things that we see in human beings uh, that live over a hundred is that they have high levels of glutathione. There have been tens of thousands of clinical studies on glutathione and showing different effects of course, but. Uh, one of the things that has been established is that lifespan is intimately associated with glutathione. Now, this makes sense because not only is glutathione neuroprotective, not only does it detoxify the body, but glutathione can actually uh, prevent the DNA in our cells from being damaged. And glutathione can actually repair damage to the DNA, preventing mutations. So when we let our glutathione levels dip, uh, it can potentially have an effect not only on our health, but our overall lifespan. So there's, there's quite a bit of information uh, if people are interested in digging into this a little bit more. But I think the, the, the main message here is that while we can't use glutathione as the means to reverse aging, it plays an important role in our overall health because our health is so connected to glutathione and our lifespan ultimately is going to be linked to our levels of glutathione. Wow, that's impressive. What is, where is this study um, found? Did you mention that? Yeah, no, this is simply an article uh, that's referencing a clinical study. If you type in uh, glutathione and life extension, you're gonna find a tremendous number of published studies that are gonna be showing this. This one over here, uh, it's a link that I pulled down on just the, the association between glutathione and life extension. Now, again, this is probably a good time to note that if people chose to use a oral supplement, they can do that, but oral supplements have uh, some pretty significant disadvantages in that uh, it takes about a month to get any uh, significant increase in glutathione, and really you'd have to take the glutathione supplement twice a day to get a 40% elevation. So that's not gonna be entirely effective for detoxification. It'll be okay for, to keep the glutathione levels elevated, but certainly it's not a good strategy for detox. Wow, no, I appreciate that perspective. You know, something that I've, I've had a question on that relates to glutathione as well as X39, I'm hoping maybe you can answer this. I bet you can. <laughs> So with the release of RX39, you know, and a focus on stem cells and how it increases the number of stem cells in the body and all the amazing uh, results that people are receiving from it, you know, how, how does that work exactly with glutathione? I mean, can you explain that, what the relationship is exactly between glutathione and stem cells? Yeah, there's a ton of things here that we can take a look at. Um, first, I do wanna, since we talked about this before, I did have a reference uh, so we're not pulling this out of the air. Um, there are many published studies which are gonna show, show the role of glutathione in detoxification. And this information has been around for decades. Um, and it's actually, it's incredible 
the number of toxins that glutathione will actually eliminate from the body. And it's, uh, it's immense role in our overall health. So we're not gonna get into all those things now because there's plenty of references, but just suffice it to say, if you wanted to learn more about how glutathione uh, is involved in the detox process, plenty of information there. Okay, now on to your question. Um, yeah, th this is really the fun part because X39 is our number one product today. It's about 50% of our sales, of course, and uh, it's the lead product. But how could we optimize the effects of X39? So Emily, maybe we could use an example. Let's say that someone has a old injury and uh, they want to heal that injury. They want to support the healing process. And maybe they've tried X39 and they're not getting the results as quickly as they might like. Well, two of the options that our members have is to use either the Eon patch or the glutathione patch to improve the efficacy of X39. The reason for this is that uh, chronic injuries especially are going to be associated with prolonged levels of elevated inflammation. And the stem cells are attracted to the site of the inflammation. Uh, so this is really the magnificent part and the divine design of our bodies. However, in cases where the injury has been around for many years, our bodies are, are not managing the inflammation uh, properly as we did when we were younger. And when the stem cells get to the injury site, they're going to die off very quickly. And so this of course is going to reduce our capacity to heal the injury. So enter glutathione as one option. Here is uh, one a study that's been published uh, in stem cell reports. And this was relatively recent in 2018. And it's using a, a laboratory technique to monitor glutathione formation in real time. Glutathione has a half-life of about seven minutes, meaning that if you take a glutathione supplement or you even go for a IV of glutathione, about an hour later, your glutathione levels will drop off. So this again is why the patch is so much better than those other methods because they keep the glutathione levels elevated. Uh, but regardless here, uh, in this study, they were looking at the relationship between glutathione in living cells and how there is a connection between high levels of glutathione and proper stem cell function. And this really makes sense because we know that glutathione is going to protect healthy cells. And so it makes complete sense that a stem cell, which is about to differentiate into any number of different cells in the body, is also going to be protected by glutathione. So right down over here, our results indicate that high glutathione levels are required for maintaining stem cell functions. So bottom line is using the glutathione patch, we know through our studies that you get detox results and other benefits, which I'll show a clinical study later. But now we know that glutath uh, glutathione uh, can also support proper stem cell function. So this would be bottom line is if someone's using X39, they have a chronic injury, they might wanna pair uh, X39 with glutathione or the Eon patch. Oh, I love that. I love how you said the, the glutathione protects the stem cells and we need those stem cells to help our bodies function the best, right? That is awesome. I love that connection point. I hope this, this next question uh, doesn't uh, uh, show how much I don't understand science the way you do, but hopefully you can answer this next one. So how does increasing the amount of stem cells in our body um, it, how does that help us have improved DNA expression and cell generation? And how does having more stem cells help us look and feel our best? Well, there are actually uh, a few, uh, several different points that are there. So let's break it down yeah. a little bit. Um, there has been some pioneering work that has been done in Israel, and it's on using hyperbaric oxygen. 
Now, I've tried hyperbaric oxygen chambers. I'm not a fan. Um, I'm not claustrophobic. I just don't like the idea of being inside a coffin that's pressurized and uh, forcing oxygen <laughs> into my body. Yeah, I like think there's, uh, there, there are better ways to do it. Uh, but it is an awesome technology. It helps a lot of people. So definitely, I am not knocking it. It's a great technology. And so one of the things that they found in Israel is that uh, with the proper procedure, you could use hyperbaric oxygen um, to increase the number of circulating stem cells. So they would essentially uh, take people that had traumatic injuries like stroke, where uh, regions of the brain had died, and they found that by using this technique, they could, uh, they could successfully treat the stroke and these people could recover. So the reason to get an increase in the total number of stem cells is that we might be able to heal an injury that we couldn't normally heal. Now, th that said, hyperbaric oxygen is not gonna necessarily improve the quality of those stem cells. It can, but not necessarily. And this is where copper peptide becomes so important because copper peptide is a very powerful gene modulator and we know it can reset the stem cells to a younger, healthier state. Now, in this particular study, what makes it interesting, when we talk about a hepatocyte, we're referring to the liver. And the reason why this was chosen is because glutathione levels are going to be uh, a concentrated source of glutathione. We need glutathione in the liver to facilitate detoxification. So it makes sense that if we wanted to, uh, we wanted to look at the regenerative capacity of the liver, which is the most regenerative organ in the body, we would want to see, is there a relationship between these high levels of glutathione and stem cell activity? And the answer is yes. So consider this for a moment. This is a really simple way to, to boil this down, is that the liver is the most regenerative organ in the body, and the liver has the most concentrated levels of glutathione, and there is a connection between the two. Now, when they look at uh, mesenchymal stem cells, or MSC, and uh, I know I pronounce this differently than everyone else because I'm from New Jersey, uh, but... Uh, so the MSC stem cells, uh, these are cells that we actually studied in our research in the development of X39. And uh, these cells are going to migrate to an injury site and they're gonna release growth factors like VEGF that are gonna help facilitate repair of the tissue. So the good news here is that if you have an injury, you elevate the glutathione and um, that is going to help the uh, MSCs do their job better. I like that. You know, I, I think it's interesting, the concept of like more stem cells and just better stem cells, right? And how it, how the glutathione can help with that. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing. So so how does, this, how does the stem cells actually help us though? Like, I mean, I know you talked about that a little bit, but what does it actually physically do in the body when you have stem cells present? Well, stem cells go through a number of different stages. A simple way to look at this is that there are, let's say at the top of the chain, pluripotent stem cells, again, just for the sake of simplicity. And pluripotent stem cells are the master stem cells in the body. And as the pluripotent stem cells divide, they become multipotent stem cells. And multi multipotent stem cells are more differentiated. And there are, uh, pluripotent stem cells can turn into anything and multipotent stem cells can only turn into a specific number of things. And then eventually we have our liver cells, kidney cells, muscle tissue, and, and so forth. So this is important because uh, the stem cells, if they're healthy, then the cells that they turn into have a greater chance of being healthy. So in, in essence, every cell that we have in our bodies was once a stem cell. And that's the significance. When we look at, uh, we remember back to uh, Christopher Reeve who played Superman. Um, he was very interested in stem cell therapy as a cure. And of course, back then, uh, that was many years ago, uh, it was thought that the only way 
of uh, harvesting stem cells was from embryos. And of course, today we know that's not necessary. Uh, although umbilical cord stem cells are uh, still being researched and that is a viable source of stem cells without the ethical issues because uh, umbilical cords are simply thrown away. So anyway, uh, we need to be uh, interested in this because how long we live is determined by our, the health of our cells, our stem cells and uh, our overall lifespan ultimately and even are the way we age are linked, all linked back into our stem cells. So any strategy that is going to be involved in age reversal is gonna be intimately linked to the health and the activity of the stem cells. Hmm. That is so interesting. There's, there's so many complex facets to what stem cells are, but I love that we have the simplicity of X39 that just says, hey, use this patch and you're gonna have more. <laughs> That's really all right. we know, right? Uh, well, there's there's three things I would point out. So the first thing is it, it's a powerful gene modulator. So it gets the stem cells working younger. And if it didn't do that, then somebody could be 60 or 70 and not really get great results with X39. But because the stem cells are acting like younger cells, people 60, 70 and above can get great results. It's also going to mobilize or activate the stem cells so now when people have an injury, the stem cells can get to where they need to go. And of course, by elevating copper peptide in the skin, now we can increase the total number of stem cells. This is reversion of the pluripotent stem cells in the skin, uh, sorry, reversion of the skin stem cells back to pluripotent stem cells. And now that increases the total number of circulating stem cells. So yeah, just that one signaling molecule, copper peptide does an amazing amount. It's, it's like one of the, it's like finding the Holy grail, uh, I would say. Yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty, pretty good, uh, analogy there. And it does feel that way a bit. You know, I know from what other people have shared about how they've experienced this product and what it's done for them, it does feel that way, you know, for those that are new. So I hope, I hope this isn't, doesn't seem for everyone else to be something that they know all about. Can you, can you just briefly, David, explain to us how does our patch actually work in stimulating the copper peptide? How does that work exactly? It works with light. So somebody that's new that maybe they're just listening today and learning about LifeWave, uh, to make this really simple, uh, think about how the sun causes our body to make vitamin D. We go outside and we know that sunlight increases our vitamin D. So this is a process that we would call photobiomodulation. It's a branch of phototherapy, but it simply describes how light can change in a very beneficial way, the chemistry of our body. So the patches utilize this principle. Uh, you put a patch on the body and it's activated by our body heat. It, the patch will then begin to stimulate the skin with very low levels of light. And these wavelengths of light will uh, cause very specific chemical changes in the body. And in this specific case, we're elevating copper peptide and the copper peptide increases the activity of stem cells in the body. So it's a, it's a form of low level light therapy. I love that. So really in fact, it stimulates antioxidants and peptides in your body, depending on the different patch with different frequencies. Am I getting that right? Basically, yes. When we talk about light, we talk about wavelength, but wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. So we can use frequency if, if we wish, but usually when we talk about lights, it's, it's all wavelengths. Oh, okay. That's not good. I appreciate it. It's all good. I'll, I'll accept frequency as a, as a legitimate answer. So it's all good. <laughs> Well, thank you, David. I appreciate you explaining that. I know there are some new people on the call and sometimes it's sure. hard to understand how it works because it, it's, it's so simple to use and people wonder well, how does it work. So thank you for explaining that. Well, sure now that we know a little bit more about that technology, especially for the new people, um, you know, uh, it's been clinically shown, like you talked about, to increase different antioxidants and peptides in our body. And you've now helped us to understand why we should be elevating specific antioxidants, the master antioxidant glutathione. So tell us a little bit about why our glutathione, you already talked about this a bit, but 
why is it a great choice to support this as opposed to the supplements and eating and all that stuff like yeah, so this will be quick. This is just another uh, reference on the effects of antioxidants. Uh, there are a number of antioxidants, of course, in our bodies, many of them. Glutathione happens to be the master antioxidant, but it is important to recognize that the antioxidants work as a orchestra, right? It's a symphony. So this is why it's important to have a balanced diet. We want to be able to have antioxidants like uh, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E. We need all of these at optimum levels in our body. Um, and we want to support our glutathione for all the reasons that we've talked about. But I, I suppose one of the most important things, it, not only on stem cells, but is on DNA. And when we consider that, D, that glutathione can protect our DNA from damage, from the effects of stress, and that Glutathione can actually repair damaged DNA before the cells divide. That's probably one of the most compelling reasons to keep our glutathione levels elevated. It, it can potentially protect us from quite a few nasty things. So we're getting, by elevating our glutathione, we're cleaning out our body. We are protecting our health. We're protecting our DNA. We're protecting our stem cells. I love that. Now, I know that, that part of what you do um, as you invent these wonderful pieces of technology for us to use, um, you're really focused on the science to back it up. You know, I know that there are quite a few studies that have been performed on all of our products, but specifically glutathione. Would you mind sharing with everyone where they can access that information or anything you wanted to share on those specifically? Sure. Uh, we would find that at the science section of our website. And this study uh, actually that we're, we'll talk about comes from the science section of the website. And um, it, looking back over this year now, we said we're over 80 clinical studies, we're over 90 clinical studies now that we've completed in the last uh, 18 years. So when someone is applying a patch to the body, we know how it works, we know what it's doing, and uh, when we make claims, we have science to back it up. So we use some of these third party studies as a reference, uh, but of course we also conduct our own studies. This one I'm gonna start with, it's a little bit esoteric, but I thought it might be fun to start with. This was one that was done in India uh, and it was done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Thornton Streeter, who is world renowned uh, is considered an, one of the experts in energy medicine. And this was done at the uh, Center for Biofield Sciences. So we've done quite a few studies with Dr. Streeter now. And this one particularly, we wanted to look at the effects of glutathione on the human biofield. And one of the techniques that is used to measure these effect is called a GDV camera. And that stands for gas discharge visualization. Uh, this was a technique that was developed in Russia. And basically we can look at um, how does something affect the overall electric and electromagnetic fields in the body. So while it is esoteric to some people, there's actually quite a bit of science behind it. But basically, uh, you know, net end effect of this study was that it was a placebo controlled study placebo controlled group had no change. Whereas the people that were using the glutathione patch did in fact show a significant improvement. So it was determined that the glutathione patch is a means for increasing the electrical and electromagnetic activity in the body. And this is important because it shows us another connection between lifespan cells when they are electrically charged like a battery, live longer. If your cells run low on electricity, the charge comes down, the cell is gonna die. So glutathione, in fact, is a way to charge up the cells of the body like a battery. Wow, I, I definitely like that. I mean, I, we don't have a USB port, right? So this is, this is a pretty nice way for us to be able to do that. I think that's great. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. So are there any other studies that you would like to make sure that those that are participating in this call today were aware of as they maybe want to learn a little bit more about glutathione? Or do you think 
that um, just this section is really where they can find the most information right now. Yeah, I'm just going to show uh, two other studies uh, just quickly here. And uh, th this is another study that we did on the glutathione patch. It was done with Dr. Homer Nazaran uh, from the Biomedical Engineering Department at the uh, University of Texas in El Paso. Uh, and it was also done in association with Dr. Sherry Greenberg. And we used a technique called electro-interstitial scanning. And basically this technique measures the bioelectrical activity in all of the organs. So the reason why this technique is valuable is not only can we see changes in the body, but we can also determine where those changes occurred and what the magnitude of the changes were. So this was exciting because uh, what this was showing was that after a month of using the glutathione patch, we were getting statistically significant improvements in the health of all of the organs in the body. And the magnitude of the, effect, of the effect was quite strong. So this was a bioelectrical assessment of the glutathione patch. Now, of course, we've done other studies. We had three studies that we did looking at uh, measuring glutathione levels in the blood. So we know that when you place the glutathione patch on the body, if you do a blood test, your glutathione levels go up. I will say that measuring glutathione in the blood is extremely tricky because glutathione breaks down so fast. Um, but this was exceptionally interesting because if we look at the difference between baseline and day one, just within 24 hours, we go to this uh, person number 15 and these results aren't typical. Uh, these levels are over five times higher than at baseline. Uh, as a matter of fact, the researchers uh, went back to recalibrate the equipment because we peaked out the equipment. 10,000 was the highest that it would measure. And they, they said, uh, something's wrong here because uh, we've never seen people's glutathione levels change this rapidly in a period of 24 hours. So we had to explain to them you know, how this was working. Uh, but we, after doing a number of studies, we found that about the average was uh, 300%, but some people do uh, not as well. Some people, of course, do much, much better. So uh, that's, that's a nice way to look at the patches. First, we look at the biochemistry, then we look at the energetics, and it all is to say that this patch has very powerful effects on the body. I love that. I really appreciate you explaining how this patch works why it's important that we're detoxing our bodies through multiple avenues with glutathione on a daily basis and explaining the differences um, in different people's needs in that way and how it really ties together and supports X39 overall and, and how together that can really help our bodies to have that longevity and that health within our cells. I think that's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Now, David, I know we're, we're pretty much out of time. We only just have a couple more minutes left. Do you have time for any Q&As at all, or do we have to close Absolutely. up? Absolutely. That's my favorite part. Let's do some Q&A. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we have, uh, we have a question here from Sheila. Uh, her question is, uh, is glutathione good for teenage acne? Okay. I have to be careful with the way that I answer this because acne is a medical condition. And um, we did a clinical study on our glutathione patch with acne uh, many years ago. I believe it was back in 2008. And we used the laboratory in New Jersey. Uh, so this was all this work was outsourced. We found that after two weeks of using our glutathione patch, uh, acne would be reduced by 68%. Three weeks was 86%. And after four weeks, over 90% reduction. So uh, there's other things that I would recommend for acne, such as uh, vitamin A and zinc, oral supplements, uh, but glutathione is definitely valuable. Uh, we don't make the acne claim uh, because we would be regulated as a drug or a medical device, and that would present, I'm oh, sorry, we don't make the acne claim uh, because we'd be regulated as a drug or a medical device. So that's why we don't talk about that study. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is that glutathione definitely can improve the quality of the skin, even with acne. Oh, wow. 
Well, that's yeah. exciting. So yeah. that might give some some great hope to some people of having a good result with that. That's wonderful. Yeah, I would say that if someone had acne, they used the glutathione patch and the acne reduced, it wasn't a coincidence. Absolutely. Uh, we have a question here from Imran. It says, we know that this talk is about glutathione. However, I do have a question about X39. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, right. Yes, I know. Uh, so I understand that there can be, um, it, that this pass should be administered for 12 out of 24 hours. And at the end of 12, um, should be taken off and handed to a loved one to apply for 12 hours. Is that, is that accurate? Is that something that is true. Uh, can you speak to that? How long the patch actually works for? Every patch is a little bit different. Patches will last longer than 12 hours. Uh, however, we recommend uh, not wearing them more than 12 hours because the body can accommodate uh, to the patch. You can overstimulate the skin and uh, people can get a heat rash if they leave the patch on too long. So uh, th this is a phenomena in light therapy that's very well known that if you keep stimulating the skin with light, eventually it stops responding. So we found through our studies that 12 hours was about right, where you get, where you get a great effect from it and the body keeps responding. Perfect, thank you for answering that one. Um, let's see here, we had another question. Um, this is from Gordon. Um, what is that I read about is called the reduced glutathione difference from regular glutathione. Reduced does not refer to a reduction in glutathione, but it is the glutathione in and of itself, if I understand what I'm reading. But it yeah. indicates what's different. Do you know what he's saying there? <laughs> I do. Yeah. So this just simply means that there are uh, different forms of glutathione in the cell and glutathione gets metabolized and it goes from one form to another. So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, you know, we're not talking about that biochemistry to avoid confusion. So that's why we simply refer to this as glutathione. But there are different chemical forms of glutathione at different stages in the cell. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't get bogged for most people. I wouldn't get bogged down in those details. It's not necessary. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, it looks like maybe we just have time for a couple more questions then. Um, I have one from Lisa here, and she says, can you explain why the patch is only placed on the right side or midline of the body? When would it be okay to place it on the left side of the body? Thank you. So the patches are polarized, and uh, we don't really talk about this very much anymore. And um, we did in the early days of the company because Ice Wave and Energy Enhancer were our first products. And those patches are, uh, of course, they're a system uh, with one patch on the right, the other patch on the left. But when we measure it, what we find is that most of our patches will produce a positive charge and other patches like the ice wave and energy tan patches produce a relative negative charge. So by placing energy patches on the body, it functions like a battery. You get the positive, uh, positive current to flow towards the negative terminal. That's one way to look at it. So the human body is polarized. Uh, this is something that's known in electrophysiology where we can take surface electrodes and we can measure uh, points of positive and negative charge on the surface of the body. So reason uh, what we wanna do here is we wanna apply a positive patch to a positive point on the body to uh, increase the potential and the energy flow. So just simply that's why we show putting patches predominantly on the right or the midline. Now you could, uh, let's say someone had a bad knee and uh, it was their left knee and they wanted to put X39 over there for short-term use, that's totally fine. Um, so any of the patches can go on the left side of the body if there was an injury. Under normal conditions though, you wouldn't do it. Okay, so normally it's better just in the, in the center. Nor normally you work with the body's natural energy flow, but in the case of an injury, you could easily put the patches on the left side of the body without a problem. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, do we have time for one more? It looks like we do. Sure, let's do it. Okay, this will be our last one then. Um, right. What role, if any, does glutathione play in sleep uh, and, and those rhythms associated, et cetera? I haven't looked at 
Uh, oh, you know, this will be fun. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I haven't looked at the specific role of glutathione in sleep in any studies, but glutath elevating glutathione because it supports immune function is going to have a relaxation uh, effect on the nervous system. So my guess uh, would be that it would help improve sleep. Now that said, I would not use the glutathione patch at night. And the reason is because, uh, because it's so powerful at detoxification, most people are, are going to end up with a headache uh, when they wake up because the toxins will accumulate. So I don't recommend glutathione at night. The reason I said this would be fun is because I've been experimenting with a new patch protocol and I have been applying the silent nights patch below the belly button uh, and you can go, let's say six fingers below the belly button uh, with the Eon patch on, let's say the right temple or the side of the neck, wherever you uh, care to put it. And I've definitely for myself known a, uh, found a synergistic effect in that combination. Uh, so I sleep longer and my sleep is deeper. So uh, that would be a protocol if someone wanted to experiment with it, glutathione about six finger widths below the belly button. Uh, sorry, silent nights about six finger widths below the belly button and uh, Eon patch on the right temple or the right side of the neck, but not glutathione. I don't recommend that. Well, I, I am excited to give that a shot. I know we all <laughs> could use the best sleep ever and it's such an important piece of our overall health. So uh, I hope everyone took notes on that one because that'll be an exciting one to try. Well, I know we are out of time and David, I just want to thank you uh, from the whole team here at LifeWave as well as uh, from those that joined the call. Thank you for sharing with us and giving us some really great insights into glutathione, X39, and, and just thanks for inventing this awesome technology. We appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, Emily. It was fun doing this with you. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank okay. you all for being on the call. Uh, I know you were excited to be able to see David today. Uh, we hope that you join us for our next LifeWave Connect call. We will not be having another LifeWave Connect in December. Our next LifeWave Connect call won't be until January, and it will be a business-focused call, which will be on January 13th. We'll have one of our SPDs, Larry Yang, joining, talking about business basics. So it'll be a great place for you to invite your brand new people on your team. And if you need a refresher on what you need to do to be this, as successful as possible, this will be a great time for you. So again, also you have a happy holidays and a safe, safe rest of your year. Um, thank you for joining us and we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks. Bye, everybody.